Guardian headlines that meat accounts for nearly 60% of all greenhouse gases. The global food system is the primary driver of biodiversity loss. We must radically change how we produce food and start eating for tomorrow. The question became, how do we start this conversation? How do we get people talking about the idea that the food on our dinner plates 20 years from now can be very different to what we eat today? Uh, and we decided the best way to do that was to create a woolly mammoth meatball. I'm George Pepu, one of the founders and the CEO of Vow. Vow is an Australian food company. We produce cultured meat, which is growing uh, meat directly from animal cells outside of the animal, so that you're able to produce the same food that we want, uh, but with a fraction of the physical and emissions footprint that you would find with uh, some intensive factory farming systems around the world. When people around the world get wealthier, one of the first things they do is add meat to their diet. And in order to satisfy that increasing demand for meat, people that are responsible for producing that, especially outside of Australia, meet that demand by cramming more animals in the same space. There's a huge amount of energy to run a multi-story building full of animals. Um, you need a lift for the pigs to go up and down. You need all sorts of things to bring the food in. And then you need a source of that food. There is a significant environmental footprint to the production of meat, and that's doing nothing to slow the demand and consumption around the world. If your goal is to make the food system more equitable and more environmentally friendly, then the production of animals for consumption is one of the biggest resource, uh, resource sort of drains within that food production system. We either persuade people to stop eating meat, and the fact that I still choose to eat meat on a daily basis is <laughs> a, a testament to how hard that can be. When you start to dig into this question of why is meat so good, why is it so desirable, it turns out there's a lot of complexity in the biochemistry of animal tissue that we've co-evolved with to find really desirable. And so you really seem to need that animal tissue to create that same satisfaction and satiation that we get from eating meat. And so that's why we chose cultured meat as our approach here, um, to grow real animal cells, to grow real animal tissue outside of the animal. So you get that complexity with a far smaller physical footprint. So our whole approach is to invent foods that don't necessarily exist. By either culturing the cells of animals we can't produce in large scales, um, or even mixing cells from different species to create entirely new sensory experiences or nutritional profiles. The question became, how do we start this conversation? How do we get people talking about the idea that the food on our dinner plates 20 years from now can be very different to what we eat today? Uh, and we decided the best way to do that was to create a woolly mammoth meatball. Um, we definitely did not expect it to get the attention it did. It was just a completely chaotic experience, but it did exactly what we were looking to do. Millions of dinner table conversations all around the world of would you eat it, why or why not? It got people thinking and it got them talking about this idea that the meat that we can choose to eat tomorrow doesn't necessarily need to be the same as what we eat today. If you want to try really exciting, delicious new foods that are nothing like you've experienced before, then cultured meat is going to, and what we're producing now is going to be something which is really, really exciting and you're going to want to give it a go.